it'll be pretty quick. We'll kind of, we'll like fly through, but we'll try to go pretty quickly. Um, other than factoring, because that's the name of the lesson, other than factoring, what are the other three ways that we have used this year to solve common um, words? Complete the square, graphing, quadratic. and quadratic formula. And we are going to use all, we're going to use three of the four today. We're not going to graph, but we will use factoring, quadratic formula for sure, and then complete the square dependent. But we're going to use three of them in this year. And this year will be more than just solving by factoring, but we're going to be solving polynomials. That's the name of the unit. So let's review really quickly some factoring basic stuff with quadratics. Quadratics are degrees 2, which means there's going to be how many solutions every time? 2. They could be real, they could be your imaginary, but there's going to be 2 solutions. So for example, if I start with x squared minus 6, 25, what factoring method would you use? Mm, complete the square. I wouldn't. Difference of squares. The square root, perfect square of both of those. What is the perfect, or the, I'm sorry, what's the square root of x squared? X goes in both. What's the square root of 625? 25. So that's plus 25, x minus 25. Now I'm only going to do the whole formal way one time. But technically to solve this, you then set each factor equal to zero. And then you solve each mini equation. Usually we do this in our head. Alright, so on the left here, if I subtract 25, I get x equals negative 25 as a root, and then x equals positive 25. So I had a quadratic, degree 2, so there are two solutions. Okay, remember that. That's the way to back. Just change. Good question. It would still simplify if you write the solution and not set the two solutions, right? Yes. Woo! Okay. <laughs> You'd write the answer. Alright, next one here, 8n squared plus 24n. How do I factor this one? How? GCF. GCF. What's the GCF here? A oh, that was beautiful. 8n. And then when I factor that out, I get n plus 3. Well, again, <laughs> I said each factor equals 0. When I said 8n equals to 0, what is the solution? Just 0. And the other solution here would be negative 3. Okay. I know we know how to solve quadratics by factoring, but especially the third one here we're going to do and see, sometimes we make little mistakes that we totally forget. 4x squared minus x minus 3. What factoring method do I use here? Okay, what kind of factor? Oh, the split the middle. So if you forgot, split the middle takes the first term times the last term. Those multiply to negative 12. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1. Negative 4 and 3. Got it. Hey, Jay. Hey. I see you. Don't make one, KJ. All right. So we write first term, then we'll split the middle with minus 4x, plus 3x, and our minus 3. Now I'm going to refresh your memory on this name because we're going to use it in a minute. What's the name of the factoring method we use for the four terms here? Grouping. Keep that name in your head. We're going to use it a lot. So we have a factoring method of grouping. So I can pull out a GCF, which is 4x. When I pull out a GCF out, I'm left with x minus 1. And the other GCF is 3. So you get this factored form of 4x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then you set it all equal to 0. What's the first root on the left here? Okay, negative 3 fourths. And our other root will be positive 1. That's not hard, correct? You're good at factoring quadratics. Yes. So now the question is, the question of the day, how can we use those same techniques of factoring to factor higher order polynomials? What do you think higher order polynomials is? Like bigger. Yeah, like degree 3, degree 4, degree 5. How can we use factoring to complete the square quadratic formula 
just after all of those. So, we're going to start with cubic. Cubic polynomials have a degree of 3. So, there are how many solutions? Three. Always 3 solutions. Now, we're going to always start with factors. Then, you might have to do the with the square or quadratic formula. But, start with factors. So, in A, how do you think we're going to start by factors x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x? A whole lot of GCF, which is x. Yeah, that would be the first place to start. We can't do any other factoring method other than that yet. Okay, so I get x times the trinomial. Now we always have to see first, can I keep factoring? Can I find two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3? Yeah, yeah negative 4 and 1. But now you don't have to do the whole split the middle here if you remember. The x comes down. And you can jump right to factors form. So you'd have x minus 4 and x plus 1. This one's pretty simple. I like this one too. So what root do I get from x? 0. 0, 4, and negative 1. Good. Now there are three roots we have of cubic, so we have three solutions. They're all real this time, correct? So let's try something different in B. No, okay there. But I don't want to go too fast so you can't write things down, but I also don't need to drag this on, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, grouping here, because there's four. So that's how I have to start here. I have to group the first two terms and the last two terms. So what's the GCF of the left group? X squared. So I have X squared times X minus 5, and the other GCF is 3. I put the two factors together, x squared plus 3 and x minus 5. I can't factor the x minus 5 again. Can I factor x squared plus 3? Yeah. No. I can't? No, I can't. <laughs> Not a perfect square, so I can't do anything else. So all I'm going to do, just like before, is I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. We're just going to jump right to the 0 product law. Okay. Well, the right-hand one... It's pretty easy. That just gives me x equals 5. That's the same kind of solving that we've been doing, just linear. What should I do on the left one? <laughs> yeah, minus 3. x squared equals negative 3. And then you have to what? Square root. Now, we have to think a little bit when we take the square root. There will be an i. But what else do I have to write when I take the square root? Plus or minus. We'll pull the i out radical 3. Those are my other two roots. Positive i radical 3 is 1, negative i radical 3 is the second, and 5 is the third. Okay, so you can have an x. Um, because remember we have the square root of negative 3 here is the square root of negative 1 times radical 3. Right, we can write it that way. And this becomes i. Okay, so what you do is You're fine. You can. I would just do that. You could write it like that. That's perfectly, that works perfectly for me. Good question. So, like again, we're not finding, yeah, flip your paper over. We're not just finding the real roots again, we're finding all the roots. So now I have 8x cubed minus 125. We have to remember all the way back to, I don't know, August, September here. Oh, yeah. I, well, I don't hate this, I don't hate this one. I don't like the quadratic formula, as you all know. I've told you that 500 times this year. So since we have to use the quadratic formula, then I like direct use. But it's okay. Here's one. Did you know we didn't have back to math? I'm not. I'm not going to Well, re reclaim your glory here. No. All right. This is some indifference of cube. That's the one where we use the SOAP acronym. No. Oh, oh, yeah. SOAP is coming back. The SOAP is coming back. You yes. have to know how to do this. I really and I will also tell you, I put the quadratic formula on your notes. So. Your quiz tomorrow is going to be at the end of the period. There's only one question, but I'm not giving you the quadratic formula. So make sure you know the quadratic formula for your quiz. By this point in the year, you should know the quadratic formula. All right, so let's, we'll deal with the scope in a minute. 
I know, we're so excited about this. Remember, this is the one that factors. It has a small set of parentheses that has two blends or two parts. And then a long set with three. Now, if you remember how to do this, that's great. Some of us are probably like, oh my goodness, I remember doing this, but I don't know. Here's how we fill in the blank. The first blank in the small set of parentheses is the cubed root of 8x cubed. What's that? 2x. What is the cubed root of 125? 5. 5. So that's what goes in the first one. I will do the signs at the end. I want to do the number. Now, to find the first blank here in the trinomial, I square the 2x. Both 2x squared. 4x squared. To find the last blank in the trinomial, I square the 5. How do I find the middle one? Multiply them together. It's 10x. He's <laughs> like, I don't know, but I'm looking at her key. And it's <laughs> now we get the sign. So, same opposite all with a positive. It has to do with the sign. Well, the same is what you start with. Minus, same. Opposite. Where? 10x. You multiply the 2x and the 5. Squaring the 5. So the first blank and the last thing squares both sides. That's why we're here. All right. Now, let's talk about solving this. The left-hand factor is easy to solve. You take 2x minus 5 and set it equal to 0. Right? This is the same that we've been doing. So when I add 5 and divide by 2, you get 1 root at 5 over 2. That one's easy. Now we have to decide what to do on the right-hand one. So let's check for a second. Let's see if we can factor. Are there two numbers that multiply to 100 and add to 10? No, because the only numbers that multiply to 100 are 1 and 100, 2 and 50, 4 and 25, 5 and 20, 10 and 10. None of those add to 10. So, here's where, and I'll tell you what, this trinomial, when you do this factoring method, will never, ever factor. Don't even try because it's not going to work. Don't waste your effort. Don't waste your pencil lead. Don't waste your brain power. So I'm taking that trinomial now, and I have to figure out how to solve it if it doesn't factor. So I have two options. I can use the quadratic formula. Remember, the quadratic formula always will work. Or I can use completing the square. Now, completing the square, we said, does always work, but it works best in certain situations. It works best when the middle term is even, which I do have here. But it works best also when the first term is equal to no. one. one. I don't know. That's a four. That's not a one. So I don't want to use complete the square here. It's going to be we're going to get fractions. So let's do quadratic formula. So we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get through the quadratic formula together because it's my favorite. So we take the opposite of b. So the opposite of ten. Plus or minus a giant square root. Now under my square root, I take b squared, 10 squared, minus 4 times a times c. It, it, it won't be that bad, I promise. Over 2 times a. We can even do it in our head if we want it to. You know, I don't like the quadratic formula either. So negative 10 plus or minus, yeah, so I have 100 minus 400. Negative 300 over 8. All right, now we need to simplify the square root of negative 300. What? Yes. There is, yeah. Bigger. 103. So this is, I'm going to pull an i out, right, because it's negative. The square root of 300 could be 100. The square root of 100 times radical 3, which is 10i radical 3. We simplify the square root of negative 300. We said that was equal to i radical 100 radical 3, which is 10i radical 3. Okay. So we can rewrite that now. Maybe when my board on 3 could just tell. Oh, it's simple. Okay. Negative 10 plus or minus 10i radical 3. Can I simplify that? I can't. 
two for Mahler coefficient. So it would be negative 5 plus or minus 5i radical 3 over 4. And again, you can leave your answer with a plus or minus. That's fine. There's two numbers there. Negative 5 plus 5i radical 3 over 4 and minus. And then the 5 over 2. No. There are three roots here. There's two in this little box and one on the left. How many real roots does this cubic have? One. Now, anytime you use, just so you know, because it might come up later, um, anytime you use the soap factoring method, there's only going to be one real root and two imaginary roots. That'll happen every time. Almost done. Now, I'm not going to make us back. Yeah. Negative 5 plus 5i radical 3 over 4, and negative 5 minus 5i radical 3 over 4. Those are the other two. We just combine them together. All right, now I'm not going to make us solve this one. We're almost done, but we'll factor it. So we're going to do quartic. How about degree of quartic? Four. So there should be four roots. All right, well, let's factor this guy. We won't solve it all the way, but we will factor it. What factoring method do I have to start with? Grouping. So I'm going to group here. My GCF of the left group is x cubed. And I'm going to pull out an x, or I'm pulling out an x cubed, so I have x plus 3. What's the GCF of the right group? <sighs> Bigger than that, 27. 27 actually goes into 81. So we have x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to write this in two different colors. I'll get x cubed plus 27 times x plus 3. Can I keep factoring? Yes. Yes, because why, why couldn't we keep factoring? Oh. I can still factor the left hand side. That's exactly like the way we factored up above. So let's factor it. We got a short set of parentheses, a long set of parentheses, and you can't forget to bring down the x plus 3 from up above. So, to fill in the short set here, remember there's two blanks. What's the cube root of x cubed? 2 root of 27. 3. All right. And I have three blanks. What goes in the first one? What goes in the last one? Nine. The middle? Three. All right, what signs then, Jamie? So, same? Same? Opposite. Okay, now that's as far as we're going to go for now because we just did the quadratic formula and it's our favorite, but we're not going to do it again. This x3 on the end is from the first factor. So it has to be that. Yeah, so there, when you do solve it, this root will be negative 3 and negative 3. There's two of them, which means it would look like what when you graph it? What's the multiplicity? We said it's just what it was yesterday. Well, no, on this root, it has a multiplicity of 2. So what would happen at the graph on the axis? It'll bounce. Right? So it bounce at 3, negative 3, and then here, I want you to make the note. We're not going to do it right now, just to save some time. But here, you're going to use the quadratic formula again to solve this inside part to get two imaginary roots. Now, why can I not use complete the square here? Uh, it won't factor, but why did I say quadratic formula instead of complete the square? Because this is odd. Right, you want an even number in the middle. Right? So we're going to leave that one. You can, if you really want to, you can keep going. But let's do two more. We're almost done. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, you had to, I would list it twice. Because inside, right? Negative three, negative three, and then whatever the imaginary ones are. Good question. All right. Why the fourth minus 16? What else? Difference of squares, yeah. X, y to the fourth is a perfect square. And what's the square root of y to the fourth? Y squared. What's the square root of 16? 4. So I have y squared plus 4, y squared minus 4. You cannot keep factoring. The negative. the negative one, not the right one. So the left, I'm sorry, not the left one. So the y squared plus 4 stays the same. That has to come down, but we don't have to 
do anything off of it. And I factor the other one with difference of squares again. So how does that guy factor? Yeah. You got it. So now we then set each of those factors equal to zero. The right ones I can probably do without writing it all down. I get a root at positive two and at negative two. Are we okay with those without talking through it all? The other one, y squared plus four, well, I need to probably at least, you can probably do it in your head, but write it down. We subtract four. And then you take the square root. Well, what's the square root of negative four? 2i, but what do I have to put in front of it? Plus 4 minus, and I have all four answers. 2i, negative 2i, 2 and negative 2. Okay. One more. One more. We can do it. 4x to the 4th, minus 13x squared, plus 2. Hmm. How many terms are there? Three. Three. So what factoring method do we use for three terms? Split the middle. <laughs> split the middle. Yes, I can do split the middle with x to the fourth. Now, one thing that has come up came up earlier. Someone asked. Um, they said, could you use quadratic formula here? Well, what's the first half of the name quadratic formula? Wow. Qua well, okay, the first half of the name is quadratic. That's what I was going for. <laughs> but the rear quadratic. Two. So the quadratic formula can only be used when you have degree two. Same with completes the square. Yeah. It does, but quadratic means degree two. So when you have degree four, you have to factor. You can't do the quadratic formula or complete the square. So let's factor here. It's not. Four times nine is thirty-six. What are two numbers that multiply to thirty-six and add to negative thirteen? Negative four and negative nine. Twelve and three does, but it doesn't add to negative thirteen. All right, so let's rewrite this. 4x to the 4th. Now, when I write minus 4, what has to be the exponent on this x? Squared, because the middle term is squared. Then minus 9x squared plus 9. So same split the middle. I'm going to group. And the GCF for the left group is 4x squared. It's not soaked this time. There's no soap this time. So when I pull up 4x squared, I have x squared minus 1. And the GCF over here is negative 9. So I'll have an x squared minus 1 again. So, yeah. We'll do difference of squares again on which one? Both of them. They're both difference of squares. It like, it's like the never-ending factoring problem. Never-ending factoring problem. So, the left one will factor. How does the left factor factor? Yep. Okay. How does the right guy factor? I know. We're going to get a faster way after spring break. Yeah, but I don't want to teach you as fast way before spring break is over there. So, so, you, what? Uh, up here? You could. You could. If you wanted to, good, good point. So here, you could factor it all the way up. Their question was, can you take 4x squared minus 9, set it equal to 0 and solve? Yeah. Well, you would get 4x squared equals 9, divide by 4. You just have to take the square root of a fraction, oh. right? Which is okay. You have a plus or minus, what's the square root of 9? Uh, square root of 4 is 2. Is that the same thing as here? 3 over 2? Negative 3 over 2? So either one is fine. It really truly is. I don't care. I don't care if you stop and then take the square root, but don't forget the plus or minus. If you do that, a lot of people who stop there forget the plus or minus. So don't do it. Okay. And, and you said you can write it down there as one. Yeah, 